Welcome. This is a battery-powered toy that I got at my local Goodwill store, and I'm going to show you step-by-step step how I circuit bend it. It's an 8-button toy that plays automotive-themed samples through the internal speaker on the back. I'm going to show you how to replace the internal speaker with an output so you can attach a cable and connect it to an amplifier, mixing board, or a digital audio workstation. The first thing we need to do is remove all the screws on the back of the toy. I have a container handy to store those screws and save them for later. The toy is built by putting two halves of a plastic shell together. Once you pull them apart, we can take a look at what we have here on the inside. There's a PC board, speaker, and a battery. So we're going to remove the two screws on the back of the PC board to see what's on the other side. You're going to want to gather all of these plastic buttons that fit into the shell and save them for later. So these newer type toys are built with a big blob of some gooey epoxy that covers any components that we might try to circuit bend. I'm experimenting, touching stuff, see if, see if there's anything that responds. But basically it just is playing the samples and those two LEDs on either side um, fried. Maybe the thing uh, went underwater, I don't know. So what we are going to do is try to power starve the circuit by disconnecting the negative lead wire that connects to the battery and putting a potentiometer in between the circuit and the battery. I'm going to use two alligator clip lead wires to test out the power starve. Hooking them up together has the toy functioning normally. Adding a 1K potentiometer allows me to slowly roll off the amount of power that's getting to the circuit. So the volume cuts, the bandwidth cuts, and then it kind of sputters off in a choppy way. So that tells me that we probably could get somewhere going this route. So I'm using a 1K pot and I'm connecting to lug one and two. It, it has full power and as you turn the knob clockwise, it cuts the power. Each of the buttons has a different sample and so the sounds are different for each one of them. Okay, so this is a mini TRS eighth inch output that has a nut. I am going to attach it to the case so that I can replace the speaker. I'm using this small handheld drill bit driver to mark where I'm putting the hole. You always have to note that there's enough room for what you want to attach. I also need to find a place to attach the potentiometer. It would be a tight fit if I tried to put it there, so I'm looking for another option. It's important to remember to check both pieces to see if there's enough room for the component. And I found a good spot. Centered in front and nothing blocking in the back. So once again, 
I'm marking the spot with a hand drill before I use an electric drill with a stepped bit to rip the hole. It's important to drill the right size hole. You wanna take your time, especially with these cheaper components, you're really gonna wanna make it fit real tight and not have to rely on the nut so that it just lasts a long, long time. And I think we got a snap fit, which is exactly what I wanted. Now we'll just attach the nut. And tighten it up with a pair of pliers. We're gonna do the same thing with the hole for the potentiometer. A good wrench comes in handy to help tighten the nut to the pot. It's also a great idea to mark the wires that go to the speaker so you know the polarity. I'm marking the positive wire and now I'm removing the speaker. And with a hot iron, I'm gonna desolder the lead wires from the speaker so I can hook them up to the output. And be sure to save the speaker for use in another project. So, our output has a tip, ring, and sleeve connections, but we only need to connect to the tip and the sleeve, the positive and the negative. So the positive tip gets connected to the back terminal on this output. Again, we're gonna use a hot iron to solder it. The other speaker wire is the negative the sleeve and we're going to connect that to the corresponding terminal on the output which is the one that's all the way in front i don't know if you can see on the camera but there is a ring connection in between those two points we're going to just leave that empty so this gives us an output that is ready for a mini ts cable as opposed to a stereo TRS connector. As you can see, sometimes it's just difficult to maneuver the two pieces of the toy when adding your components and doing your work. You're watching me in real time, like try to figure it out. Eventually, I realized it's a lot easier if I just disconnect the positive connection to the battery terminal and hook it back up after I've completed my modifications. Sometimes you just gotta try a few methods to figure out what's gonna work best. And it's often different for each situation. Before I can reattach the circuit board, I need to put back the eight plastic buttons that activate the samples. And now I can reattach the circuit board with the original screws. I've got plenty of clearance with the original wire, so I'm gonna connect 
this negative wire from the circuit board to lug number one on this 1K potentiometer. Using a hot iron to solder the connection. I'm adding a new wire to the second lug, the middle lug on the potentiometer, and that wire is going to be connected to the negative battery connection. Okay, so our negative power starve connections are in place. And now what we have to do is reconnect the original positive wire from the circuit board to the battery. Once we're done with the soldering, what we're going to do is put it back together so that we can test it out plugged into a guitar amplifier and we'll see how it sounds. You may need an adapter to get from the mini output to the quarter inch instrument cable size for an amplifier. Now when we hook it up to an amplifier for a test, we hear a loud static hum. I was expecting this and so I'm going to show you how to fix it. Using two test leads, I am connecting a 1K resistor to both sides of the output and the static hum is gone. For proof of concept, disconnect the lead wires and the hum comes right back. I want to experiment with the value of the resistor that I'm attaching, so I'm testing it out as I go. Right now, there's a 1K resistor attached to both sides of the output, and it sounds like this. Always go through all the different buttons, because each button is going to get a different response from the power star. As I'm testing the toy, I make mental notes as to how it responds, what sounds I'm able to get out of it, so that as I experiment with other resistors, I'll have something to compare it to. So, after much experimentation, I decided I'm going to install a 200 ohm fixed resistor on both sides of the output. There are infinite numbers of choices you can make when circuit bending. It just may or may not be the result that you're looking for. I used a resistor you could try using different capacitors. I'm showing you my method, but there's really no rules. This is circuit bending. So let's put this toy back together and test it out with the 200 ohm resistor.
Now that I am done with the modifications, I have marked the components with a permanent marker and secured the loose wiring with a hot glue gun before putting everything back together with the original screws. Okay, and just to recap, we replaced the internal speaker and replaced it with a mini eighth inch output jack. We buffered that output jack with a 200 ohm resistor and we installed a 1K power starve control knob. I hope you enjoyed my step-by-step -step circuit bending video. Please like and subscribe if you did. You can leave a comment below and I'll see you on the next one.